All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mike Day, uh, dealer service representative here at AGWS. Uh, welcome to our July AGWS UFNI Insights webinar. Uh, today, Bob Harkins, our vice president of training, will be covering uh, value added FNI sales presentations, value added objection handling, goals, how to accomplish. And we'll go to the next slide for that. You guys can see it. And then if you have any questions or comments, please type them into the panel on the right, and we'll try to address them as they come in. Uh, for follow-up questions, you can email those to B Harkins. that's B-H-A-R-K-I-N-S, at agws.com. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Bob. Thank you very much, Mike Day. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to your F&I Insights. For our goal, our objective is to help our agent partners, theater clients, and others to maximize deal profit meaning both front-end gross and finance and insurance income, but as always, to do it the right way. And the right way, of course, is in a manner that's consistent with good customer relations and sound business practices. Mike, let's begin with goals, how to accomplish. So our first slide, goals, how to accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen this before, welcome to Zig Ziglar's Seven Steps of Goals, How to Accomplish. We come to our classes in Chicago and things that we conduct around the country. Uh, you've seen this. If you've been around long enough, as I have, to see Zig Ziglar in person for a number of decades, really this was things that, 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 that Zig covered nationwide for many, many years. A goals, how to accomplish. Uh, you know, so we're at, we're at a new month, the second week of July. We're at a new quarter, uh, July, and we're beginning the second half of 2020. When you think about it, what a great time. And what better time could there be to kind of reset, look at, and maybe establish or reestablish our goals from an F&I arena standpoint as we get into the, uh, the last half of 2020. So think about that for a minute. What's your dollar per car goal, dollar per retail unit? $1,500 a car, $1,800 a car or more. What's your finance penetration goal? 85%, 90%, more or less. What's your service contract? What's your service agreement goal? 60%, more or less. What's your guaranteed asset protection or gap addendum contract goal? 50%, is it more or is it less? So these first three steps really kind of go together. Establish your goals, write them down, and develop your plan of attack. Now, Webster defines a goal as an end that one strives to attain, an end that one strives to attain. In our classes around the country and in our classrooms in Chicago and Warrenville, we talk about, talk about a couple of other different definitions of, 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 of a goal. And what I mean by that is a goal is a predetermined objective or target, but better yet, what I like is basically this, and that is a goal is a dream with a deadline. A goal is a dream with a deadline. So let's talk about some of these numbers. I wanna share with you some things that are kind of hot off the press. And if you subscribe to Automotive News and other industry publications, you've probably seen this. Uh, let's talk about uh, BSC service contract penetration on automobiles. This appeared on, in Automotive News in the June 22nd, 2020 issue. And the BSC penetration on new cars and light trucks, the BSC penetration for new cars and light trucks uh, last year was uh, 47.5%. So again, 47.5%. Uh, you know, with all the training that we do, with all the webinars, all the seminars that, that we do around the country, many, many organizations, we still haven't cracked that 50% number. So 47.5% service contract sales. Uh, so that's an average. Yeah, some of us are doing better, some are doing worse. That still means on average 52.5% are saying no. By the way, that article that gave us the 47.5% pointed out that uh, 10 years ago, I want to go back that far, the average BSC penetration on new cars was 37 and a half. So in the past 10 years, we bumped at 10 points, 37 and a half to 47 and a half. Now to me, in addition to these penetration goals, perhaps the most important number or a very important number is what I like to refer to as uh, PSPRS. PSPRS stands for product sold per retail sale. Product sold per retail sale. Now, depending upon your organization, if you do a lot of leasing, Perhaps you want to you record that separately as PSPCL, which stands for product sold for, for consumer lease. So product sold for retail sale, let's say that we have uh, five retail sales. Among those five retail sales, we've sold uh, 10 products, our optional voluntary protection products. So 10 divided by five is two. So our PSPRS 
uh, would be two. Let's say that among those five retail sales, we've sold only three products. The three divided by five, our PSPRS would be 0.6. Well, NADA released these numbers as part of their average leadership profile that you can get from NADA and Theater Academy information as it relates to uh, 2018 and also 2017. So for, for, for 2019 and 2018, I'm sorry. For 2019, the new car, PSPRS, was 0 0.876, 0 0.876. So we're selling less than one product per sale for every new car transaction, uh, 0.876. Uh, that was for 2019, and that's down from what it was in 2018. 2018, it was 80.896. Then on used vehicles, we're up a little bit. It's 0 0.75 versus 2018 numbers is 0 0.732. So the bottom line is still with these numbers, we're, we're well less than one product sold for retail sale. So, you know, what are your goals with respect, with respect to that? So establish your goals, write them down. Our recommendation, I think, was Ziggs as well. Buy yourself a heck of a supply of index cards, three by five index cards, and uh, write those goals down. Number three, develop your plan of attack. What that very simply means is how am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? So the things that we need to think about is what's my game plan? What's my processes? Processes, as they say. What's my performance goals? Uh, what's my training commitments? And last but certainly not least, and maybe most important or more important, uh, is, is who can help me? Who can help me get there? And that brings us to item number four, and that is share them with those who can help me attain them. Share them with those who can help you attain them. And who might that be? It might be your wife, it might be your husband, it might be your significant other, it might be your mentor, it might be your director, a direct manager, a direct report. Uh, anyone, anyone that you can talk to who can help. Share them with those who can help you attain them. Uh, keep track of your, of your progress, number five. Keep track of your progress. At the bottom of the page, if you can see that, Zig says goal attainment is hard by the yard, but it's a cinch by the inch. Hard by the yard, but it's a cinch by the inch. So keep track of your progress, hard by the yard, but it's a cinch by the inch. Number six, maybe the most important thing after establishing your goals, quite frankly, is to see yourself there. See yourself there. So instead of thinking and writing resolutions, I wanna be at 85% penetration or 60% penetration or $1,500 a car. An affirmation means that you start that statement with, 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 with the statement words of I am. I am on your index cards. I am at 85% finance penetration. I am at 60% service contract penetration. I am at uh, 1.85 PSPRS. So see yourself there, I am. And then last but certainly not least, uh, when do I start? Uh, no better place than right now, uh, uh, the present. By the way, one or two more numbers. Perhaps you saw this just a couple of weeks ago and a bit of news as well that has to do with putting our deals together and what customers finance. And that is Edmunds.com reported that uh, the new car transactions and new car transactions, the negative equity in new car transactions has never, ever been higher. And now it represents 44% of all the new car and light truck transactions in America. And the average dollar amount of new car transactions is 55.71. $5,571 of negative equity. It's the highest ever. So ladies and gentlemen, think about that. If you have a 72 month contract, even at zero APR, that adds another $77 a month to the customer's payment without any product ads, meaning your, uh, your optional voluntary protection products. So this year, also hot off the press, uh, NADA just reported their seasonally adjustable annual rate with what we've done this year in the industry and the things that we're facing is that this year we're looking at uh, a SAR of 12.6 to 13 million new car and light truck sales. And as you know, the past five years, it's been five straight years of above 17 million, with 2016 being the, the best year ever in the retail automobile industry at 17 and a half million. So with that, Mike, let's go to uh, refocus number one. Refocus number one, we've talked about the goals, what we want, what we want to attain, but you know, maybe more important than that, quite frankly, is what do our customers want? What do our customers want? Had the opportunity sometime back, I was doing a 20 group meeting, 
on compliance and ethics issues. I got into the meeting the night before, had dinner with a few people, and I learned that uh, the day's meeting that they had, the day, the, the day that I got there but not, did not attend the meeting, talked about the results of the manufacturer focus groups and the top four things that customers want uh, in, in the purchase of an automobile. And these are the top four things that were based uh, from a list of a number of things to, to, to choose from. So refocus, focus means to be what? Clear and sharp. So number one, number one thing that people wanted was a quick and efficient sales and F&I process that is professional and transparent. So I look up the word professional. Professional means we're engaged in a sport or a specified occupation for pay. So you can decide which one we're in. Maybe it's both. But maybe the key word there is transparent. A quick and efficient sales and F&I process that is professional and transparent. Transparent meaning that things are clearly seen and easily understood by our customers. Now the numbers right below that, we've talked about this in a couple of previous webinars the past year and a half, and this is JD Power information, and it has to do with minutes, total time, and then downtime waiting for an F&I representative. 187 minutes represents the total time to complete a new car sale and, and the F&I process. So the total average time to complete a new car sale and F&I process, JD Power number, the survey, 187 minutes. I'm not real good with math, but that's uh, what just north of three hours. Uh, the focus I think that we need to, 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 to think about and do something about is that uh, 32 minutes of downtime waiting to get into the FNI office. Now it's not on this slide, and since we did this, there's two other numbers that JD Power came, at, came out with. Let me give them to you. And those two numbers are this. Number one is 41, and the second number is 20. 41 minutes is the average time spent in FNI. 41 minutes, the average time spent in F&I. So of that 187, average time would be 41 minutes. And 20 has to do with this. If we can get that customer out in 20 minutes or less, and by the way, some stores are doing that and public companies are doing that. If we can get them out in 20 minutes or less, the CSI increases significantly if we're able to do that. So, you know, we've got uh, 187, 32, 41, and 20. So what are we doing to, uh, to, to accomplish that? Before we go to the, to the next slide, I, I would just say, say this to you. As we, think about, as we think about that downtime of 32 minutes, you know, what can we do? I'm convinced over the years uh, that the most powerful tool that we have, think about this, the most powerful tool that we have to move a customer to buy or embrace your optional voluntary protection products is credible third-party information. Not from me, not from you, not from whatever, but from credible third-party information. That might be AAA handouts, might be information from JD Power and Associates, it might be surveys that Ally does on a regular basis, it might be an article or two from F&I and Showroom Magazine, but to me, the best by far, quite frankly, is to show the customer during that 32 minutes, and this can also apply to people that are in the service uh, uh, lounge as well, to give the customer a tablet and have them have the opportunity to view your generic uh, product videos. And the key to that is they should be two minutes or less. Uh, they're generic. Uh, they have no brand name. So think about that. If the customer is doing that at their leisure and they, and they pull up one of those generic product videos and maybe their desire is to go to their own bank or credit union finance and they play one of those deals for like a minute and 36 seconds and the title of it is financing, do I need another source? You know, and that's done not by a finance and insurance manager, it's done by a certified financial planner and talks about diversification and, and, and what I should do as far as finance sources. So if a customer had a chance to look at that, that's a presentation made by a professional. Next one might be uh, one that's titled, it's a new vehicle, so it doesn't uh, it come with a warranty. Well, that talks about uh, the, the narrator as a certified master technician, and the fact that uh, we seldom repair anything these days, but basically I diagnose, remove, and replace compo components. And when I have to do that, it's certainly not, not cheap. The other video is, can I take care of the maintenance myself? Well, yeah, you can, but if you do that, one of the things that you're missing is the printout uh, whenever your VIN number, your vehicle identification number is entered into your dealership computer, and that's always gonna print out in these service bulletins, uh, software updates, or recall information. So we get that by going back to the respective dealership. Uh, what about gap? We have uh, you know, a, 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 a tape that shows uh, gap being described by an independent insurance agent and talks about why I had gap as part of my, my protection. Uh, 
Next one, doesn't my insurance cover a flat tire or maybe a bent wheel? And it gets into information with respect to that. Again, that's presented by an automotive tire professional. How can I get the most uh, for my vehicle when it comes time to sell or trade? We're talking about uh, environmental protection, the paint, inside and out, whatever, and the fact that, hey, the two things that impact the vehicle, uh, the value of the vehicle the most, the most, of course, would be the exterior and interior protection of your vehicle. So it, it can go on and on with these kinds of, of videos. If the customer is seeing that, they're, 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 there's no brand name, they're generic, they're done by a professional, what a great value add that is as it relates to uh, uh, just providing this information to the customer and coming across in a professional way. Refocus number two, refocus number two, they wanna talk with someone, preferably one person, who will help them uh, get the vehicle they want at a price and payment they can afford. So what that means is that, you know, what they're disliking, the way I read that is the back and forth between the desk and tower and back to the customer, the back and forth. So preferably one person who will help them get the vehicle they want at a price and payment they can afford. You know, two of our public companies, Sonic Automotive, you're familiar with them, but also Asbury Automotive Group have done some interesting things. But I encourage you to look into that and read up on it. Sonic has a commitment. They call it one Sonic, one experience. One Sonic, one experience. It's one person that does the auto automobile sale, the retail sale, also handles the F&I process as well. They issue a tablet to their, their people. They're trained and, and they do that. A Sonic is doing that in the, their Echo Park stores around the country. They use vehicle or retail stores, their super stores, super centers, and they're also putting that into their other stores, their regular retail stores as well. One Sonic, one experience. And then last year, year and a half or so ago, I believe it was, Asbury Automotive Group. Again, Sonic is the sixth largest dealer group in America. Asbury is the seventh. But Asbury, what they've done, from a title standpoint, they've eliminated the salesperson title. There's no salesperson. They've also eliminated the finance manager title. Now, before you panic, what have they replaced them with? The salesperson title has been replaced by a product specialist. They're product specialists. They present the vehicle, the technology, the this, the that, the other thing, whatever. But when it comes to the value of a trade-in, the price, the payments, the F&I presentation, whatever, that product specialist now turns that customer to a VOM, a VOM. And a VOM, ladies and gentlemen, stands for a variable operations manager, a variable operations manager. The variable operations manager takes the prospective customer through the sales process for the vehicle and also through the F&I process as well. And a number of non-public dealer groups are committing themselves to exactly that. They may not use the same title, but basically that's what it is. Product specialists to present the vehicle, the technology, the, um, the, the demo ride, et cetera, et cetera. And then they're turning to the variable operations manager to complete the buying process uh, for both the, uh, the, the front end and also the finance and insurance process as well. Uh, Mike, next, uh, number three. To be clear and sharp on the top four things customers want based upon this focus group data, number three is a beneficial F&I experience that expedites the delivery process, not prolongs it. So really that gets back to our 187, 32, 41, and 20. So when you think about it, what we have to develop is an F&I process. We have to develop our, our F&I technique, our steps to the sale. You know, probably the greatest number I've seen as far as F&I technique steps to the sale has been about 16. A lot of stores have more than 12 steps. The least number I've seen is probably four. Well, I got to tell you, when I got into F&I back in the dark ages in the 1970s, when I was trained and began F&I training in 1976, for well over a decade, decade, decade and a half or more, our F&I technique for steps to the sale was five steps. Introduction, rapport, qualify, present, and close. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, it worked. In production, rapport, qualify, present, and close. Some stores are still using that today. And then quite frankly, to be fair, uh, some stores really have no process at all other than the SWAG method, S-W-A-G, scientific wild ass guess. And sometimes it works very, very well. Other times it doesn't work very well at all. So what we really wanna do is eliminate that uh, negative turnover or referral term that many of our salespeople kind of despise that, that term and really ask them to, uh, to do a transfer of trust and that, that, that sets the customer up for our discussion with them uh, in the store. And quite frankly, if it's gonna take 45 or 60 minutes, let's tell the customer up front how long that's gonna be 
So there's no surprise as it relates to that, 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 uh, that average that we have in our industry of 41 minutes. Mike, let's go to number four. Number four, what do they want? An FNI professional that adds value to the purchase experience, not aggravation. That adds value to the purchase experience, not aggravation. You know, what causes aggra aggravation? Uh, to me, what causes that is uh, a monologue presentation, like I'm doing now, quite frankly, when the customer is not involved at all, there's no interaction. Or also what causes that is a dialogue presentation where we've gone so far into the dialogue technique and commit with the dialogue that we have all of these questions for all of our products and services, and it really comes across as an interrogation. And after it becomes an interrogation, the next step becomes a combative com conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, you know when that happens, as good as our products and services are, it's not gonna be a good result with the customer. So we wanna add value to the purchase experience, not aggravation. I would remind you, we conduct our front end sales training on selling the vehicle. We've, we've talked about for years, and it's still true, the four whys that are on the mind of every customer when they buy that, that newer or pre-owned vehicle from you. What are the four whys? It doesn't matter whether they're in their store or it's online or whatever, but it's why your product, why your dealership, why buy now? And the most important one perhaps is why buy me? Why buy me as the professional sales consultant? However, it changes a bit when they get into F&I. And three questions that they ask, and we know this is true, they would ask this inwardly to themselves about the process, but unfortunately, they don't, they, they don't come out outwardly to you with that unless that's it, it really is a, it is a bad situation that they're involved with. It with. What are the three questions they ask? Number one is, can I trust you? Number two, are you credible? And number three is, do you care? Do you really care about me and my need or situation? But I would say to you, ladies and gentlemen, if that answer is, is, is no, or I don't know, or I'm not sure about any one of those three questions, it's probably not going to happen. Now, to me, I think there's always a question number four, too, that they're thinking. And that is, is this person, is this gentleman, is this lady, are they really trying to help me? Are, this, are they just trying to tell me something? Are they, are they trying to help me, just trying to sell me something? Next slide, Mike. Our focus conclusion, okay? To be clear and sharp in the top four things, our conclusion, I create that, that transfer of trust. Our financial services manager is the term that we like to use. Business consultant would be next. But our financial services manager, if we're doing that direct transfer of trust, We'll do three things for you, ladies and gentlemen. He or she will, number one, expedite the delivery process for you and your family. Number two, he or she will assist you with your financial arrangements. And oh, by the way, folks, I almost forgot, be sure and ask Bob to chat with you about the remaining portion of the manufacturer's limited warranty on your new vehicle and how it ties in and relates to your, to your driving habits. So folks, Bob will take good care of you. I'll be over here getting your vehicle ready for delivery and I'll, I'll catch up with you folks in about 35 or 40 minutes. And there you have it, expedite the delivery process, assist with the financial arrangements, and discuss the manufacturer's limited, limited, limited warranty. You know, we do a, a, a block of instruction in, uh, in, in our training classes and also in stores, and we call it uh, commit, commit to the F&I four-way stop, commit to the F&I four-way stop. And here's the F&I four-way stop. So think about it yourself. Are we guilty of any of these things? Number one, stop the fake chit-chat. Number one, stop the fake chit chat. So I don't know what your fake chit chat is, but you know what it is. So number one, stop the fake chit chat. Number two, stop the phony surveys. Get rid of them. Do we really need a survey to ask customers a question about their need for tire and wheel or gap or any of our products? I don't think so. Stop the phony surveys. Number three, stop the mindless, endless questioning of customers from those surveys or just question after question to present our products because that dialogue now becomes an interrogation. And as we said earlier, that can lead to combative conversation and it's not gonna happen. So you, you're done when that happens. And then last but not least, and a critical one that we see in so many stores, start forcing customers to wait, sitting in the lounge or wherever, part of that 32 average time minute uh, process before they ever get into F, F and I, when they're looking in and seeing you with no one in the office, but you're doing something. And what we're probably doing is we're trying to develop that magic menu presentation. So what we're saying is stop uh, forcing customers to wait, stop the magic menu wait, bring the customer in and complete the menu with them. So the four way stop, stop the fake chit chat, stop the phony surveys, stop the mindless, endless questioning of customers, combative conversation, and stop forcing them to wait before they come into the office and begin your process. So, you know, what I would say to you, depending upon the store, depending upon the individual, 
because there's a lot of things in this industry that we, we can't control. And you know what a lot of them are. But I'll tell you one thing is that we can control. And what that is, is the quality of our own personal presentation. The thing that we can control is the quality of our own personal presentation. So for many stores, for many individuals, I would say to you, perhaps our focus needs to be changed. Our focus might need changing. So instead of saying, you know, we have all these products, how can I sell them all to my customers? Maybe the new way or a different way of thinking should be, you know, I have all these customers, how can my products help them? But all these, all these, these customers, how can my products uh, help them? My next slide, let's get into our steps to the sale. That's what I technique steps to a sale. We're not trying to say that these nine steps are right for you. I've seen three, four, five steps. I've seen 16. I will tell you this. These nine steps to the sale were not prepared by me. They're actually the nine steps of a sale of a store here in Texas that I'm very familiar with. Uh, this store has six franchises. They have uh, three locations. They run over $1,200 a car uh, consistently. Uh, their, their repeat referral of businesses is terrific. Their charge chargebacks are, are not an issue. They're minuscule. And quite frankly, they do business uh, the, the, the right way. So this is their nine steps to the sale of their F&I technique. And they still do something that's kind of interesting. And that is they look to take the credit application and F&I, have the customer sign on a five line out front so that they're able to pull the uh, credit report from the various credit reporting agencies. So what are their nine steps? Number one, transition from sales to F&I. That's that transfer of trust that we talked about. Number two, we check the figures for accuracy, uh, review the buyer's order. Uh, number three, get something signed, uh, title application agreement to provide agreement to provide insurance. You know what we found, and when we're, we're trying to really go from that dialogue sales presentation to conversational selling, when you're reviewing the figures with the customer and you're getting something signed and the license and title paperwork, whatever, let's out, ask some power questions that really come across and help us to, uh, to, to start that conversation selling early in the process. So instead of asking the, how many miles a year do you drive, how long do you plan to keep your new car, might those driving, driving habits change, did your salesperson happen to discuss the manufacturer's limited warranty on your new or pre-owned vehicle, whatever, you know, all things that we've taught since 1979, I've heard that one or two times, let's work smarter, let's work smarter, and maybe from a conversational selling standpoint, in steps two or three, we ask something like, Mr. Customer, by the way, just out of curiosity, what is the one technology feature that excites you the most in your new vehicle? I was in a store not long ago, and they, they changed it to folks, what, what's the one or two technology features that, 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 that excite you the most in your new vehicle? And you know what? People will talk. And when they talk, we can have a response as it relates to that. Another great question, how would you describe a typical month with your vehicle? Instead of how many miles a year do you drive, how long do you plan to keep your car? How would you describe a typical month with your vehicle? Two more. How would you describe a typical weekend for you and your family with your vehicle? Maybe they get into sports, they get into traveling teams, they get into this, they get into that. How would you describe a typical weekend for you and your family? And then last but not least, number four is a, is a great question because it involves the, the power words of one and describe. And that question is, folks, let me ask you, what one word would best describe the vehicle you're trading in today? And then the, the, it went with their response and ask them why they, why they feel that that would be true. So those first two steps, check the figures for accuracy, uh, get something signed, is an opportunity to really begin our conversational selling with the customer. Uh, again, this uh, dealership group, uh, they assume the business in a professional manner. If they don't have the credit application yet, Mr. Customer, let me get a few pieces of basic information then to complete the financial arrangements on your new car. And by the spelling of your last name is what? H-A-R-K-I-N-S, is that correct? What's already been done out front, Bob, uh, let me briefly review the information on your customer statement to make sure all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, so to speak, in order to complete the financial arrangements. And again, Bob, again, Bob your middle initial is at an A, R, L, whatever. They can't read their own writing or the salesperson's writing. So we gotta work smarter, not harder with respect, with, with respect to that. Now, that next step, um, credit application, our credit application process. Uh, thorough review, credit view, review, ask trigger, tr uh, trigger questions, entire story, and take notes. What I have found and recommended to you, instead of having all your salespeople give the customer the credit score disclosure exception notice, and you know, the customer asks a question, they don't know how to answer it, whatever, and who knows what that answer is. If we work smarter, not harder, and think about uh, 
you know, compliance and ethics, whatever, maybe as a financial services manager, we should be the one that's giving out the credits for disclosure notice. So a great time to do that is between, you know, perhaps steps four and five and how it's done at this organization. So Mr. Customer, uh, here's your credit score disclosure notice from the computer, uh, from, the, the, uh, from the reporting agency, uh, Equifax. Folks, this notice is uh, required by federal law. We're very pleased to provide, provide you with this information here at Harkins Honda. As uh, you can see, your, this form is really broken down into three parts. Number one is your credit score up here at the top, uh, 639. The middle section there is the information on how to read and understand your credit score and how it ties into the credit scores in the Equifax model. Number three, and most important down at the bottom is how to get a free copy of your credit report from any one, for all, really all three of the major credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So Mr. Customer, we're pleased to provide this information to you. Need your signature in today's date down here at the bottom just to certify and confirm that we did in fact provide you with this information. So I'll tell you, you do something like that, people are gonna say, hey, that's great. I had no idea, appreciate for you sharing that with me. So Mr. Customer, here's your credit score disclosure notice from the computer, from the, uh, from the credit reporting agency, Equifax. This notice is required by federal law. We're very pleased to provide you with this information here at our particular, particular dealership. So we're off and running with that. Next, we get into the manufacturer's limited warranty. Uh, we'll get into that with the next slide in just a second. We talk about the remaining portion of that. Uh, base statement. Uh, we spent time in a previous webinar talking about the base statement, the value statement. It tells your dealership story. It's your dealership DNA. It's the foundation of your presentation. And basically the way that I like to talk about it is our commitment here at the dealership is to do business the right way. We spell right, R-H-I-T-T. -T. That stands for our five principles of how we conduct business. Respect, honesty, integrity, transparency, and trust. But it's our dealership DNA. Present our financial package, NADA model leadership policy for voluntary protection products is the recommended term that we use. But then into the menu, the disclosure, handle objections, and close and print. So if we talk about the quality of our personal presentation, whatever our F&I technique is, whether it's nine steps like this or five steps or 18 steps, whatever, you know, Zig Ziglar always talked about the most important question in sales or selling is very simply this. What do our customers see in us? What do our customers see in us? So ladies and gentlemen, what, what do your customers see in you? But remember how Zig did that? He took the, 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 the word S-E-E, uh, C, and broke that down into three elements. S stands for sincerity, the first E stands for enthusiasm, and the second E stands for, uh, for empathy. So the proper display of sincerity, enthusiasm, and empathy is what we need if we want to be successful and hit those, those challenging yet realistic goals we've set, we've set for ourselves. By the way, some of you now are involved with the number of presentations online with the, uh, the, the time frame that we're in in our industry. Uh, numbers I hear is this may represent ultimately 12 to 15 percent of uh, all of our sales, but we're nowhere near that today. It's like maybe three to five percent. But if you're interested in um, a, a transition to in-store F and I, in our training class, we have a handout. We call it Eight Tips. Eight Tips to Transit Transition In-Store F and I Online. Be happy to get that to you if you want to contact me after the webinar, and we can shoot that out to you. It's eight tips to establish an FNI process with uh, internet, internet customers. Mike, Mr. Day, next to slide if you would. All right, one of the things we've been asked to do over the years, and I know this is being done very successfully in stores, is to help people put together the presentation for the uh, vehicle service agreement, primarily as it relates to, to pre-owned. So here's a little pre-owned value illustration that we do with our customers in class, our people in class, and uh, also have a, have a lot of fun role playing this uh, with, with, uh, with people around, around the table. So what is your understanding of the remaining portion of the, uh, of the manufacturer's limited warranty on your new vehicle? So maybe we're selling a vehicle to the customer. It's a two-year-old vehicle with 28,000 miles. So I can't go through this with you with the numbers on here, but really the way I like to do this and the way that we teach it is in seven steps. Step number one is to point out the powertrain coverage, the remaining portion of it. It uh, starts out at five years or 60,000 miles, powertrain, the engine, transmission, and, and, and drive system. Our certified master technician says that that's probably about 400 components. Second thing we want to point out is the comprehensive portion of the manufacturer's limited warranty, all the major and minor components of your new vehicle for the first three years or 36,000 miles. Our master technicians say that that's probably about uh, five, 
5,000 components. Now, once we've done that, now on the right-hand side, we're gonna write the words not covered. Well, folks, let me share with you what's not covered under the manufacturer's limited warranty as well. Number one, of course, are the tires on your vehicle. They're, they're covered by the separate manufacturer, uh, warranty from the tire manufacturer itself. Also, what's not covered under the manufacturer's limited warranty is your tire and heel, uh, wheel uh, uh, road hazard coverage or protection. Also, what's not covered are incidentals. If you have a breakdown or repair while you're traveling, you don't have coverage for, for food, lodging, car rental, phone calls, uh, things like that that are left or stolen from the vehicle itself. What you're also not, not covered by the manufacturer's limited warranty is normal maintenance. Engine oil change, oil filter change, duplication of the, of the key chassis parts. You have your uh, multi-point inspections and uh, also your tire rotations as well not covered under the manufacturer's limited warranty. Number four, environmental damage. Airborne chemicals, hail, flood, wind, rainstorm, whatever. And last but not least, normal wear and tear. I like the CNC approach, cosmetic uh, uh, conditions, uh, dents and dings, scrapes and scratches, windshields, the chips, et cetera. Now, after, we, after we've gone through those things that's not covered under the manufacturer's limited warranty, a great phrase to say is now something like this. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you'll be happy to know that just because these items are not covered by the manufacturer's limited warranty doesn't mean they can't be covered. I'll be happy to share with you a little bit more about that a bit later. So now step number five, we point out what's used as far as the manufacturer's limited warranty. That would be that box there on the left-hand side. And we're going to draw another line. It's going to show two years or 28,000 miles, what's used or expired. And then that leaves the, between that and the... Uh, the 336, the remaining manufacturer's limited warranty of one year or 8,000 or 8,000 miles, uh, whichever comes first. We say based upon your driving habits, when do you think that would be? Most people will say, well, yeah, it's going to be the 8,000. And now you come back and say you're exactly right. When would you say a vehicle is most likely to, likely to have a problem? In this area of one year or 8,000 miles or in this area out here outside the manufacturer's limited warranty? And almost everybody will say, well, hey, obviously in this area out here, we can come back and say, again, folks, I agree with you. I agree with you. In fact, that uh, is an area that we call of an area expo of exposure or miles at risk, where you're going to be 100% risk responsible. And quite frankly, if they want to know more about that, how they can protect themselves, now you get involved with your vehicle service agreement presentation directly, instead of waiting for your menu presentation or your prepaid maintenance or anything that they want to talk about. But basically what we're doing here is giving, giving them information about the coverage and what's remaining and what's not covered under the manufacturer's limited warranty to plant the seed for your optional voluntary protection products. Mike, next slide. We have a lot of fun with this. We call it the, the boxes. Some of you have seen this before because we do this in class and in our workshops around the country. This is from master salesperson uh, Tom, 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 Tom Hopkins. Uh, Tom Hopkins. So transitional power phrases, transitional power phrases. So we ask a trial close, maybe for a service agreement. Uh, Mike, let me ask you, can you see how our vehicle service agreement gives you a hedge against inflation on the cost of parts and labor at a reasonable cost? Or maybe we give the customer a gap trial close. Those can you see how our gap contract addendum protects your budget, your credit, your savings, and your total investment against financial loss. So a couple of examples of the trial closes. And now we have the ever popular invalid objections, and also valid objections. To me, and what we know is the five big or five big invalid objections are no thanks, number one. I think I'll pass, number two. Uh, I don't buy those things, number three. Number four, I need to think it over. And quite frankly, as my father, my dad used to always say, just because. Well, just because. How can you handle those things? You can't. Why can't you handle them? They're invalid objections. We have to turn those into a valid objection. So what are the five big valid objections? Number one, it costs too much. Number two, the payments are too high already, much less adding another whatever, right? Number three, I bought it before and I never used it. Number four, perhaps even more deadly, I bought, before, bought it before I tried to use it and the claim was denied because it didn't cover what, uh, what my problem was. And number five again, well, just because, just because. So real quickly, let's write these in, these phrases. Uh, top three, one, two, three. NP stands for no problem, folks. Today, we probably say no worries, folks. BHT stands for be happy to provide you with that, inf with that information. Number three stands for I understand. Now, uh, we found that I understand works well with a tangible presentation of the vehicle, 
but your intangible products and services, let's go with maybe four other words. And those four other words are I-C-A-T, which stands for I can appreciate that. So the first the three boxes, uh, no problem, be happy to, I understand, or I can appreciate that. Number four, Pam, please allow me. Uh, number five, uh, I'm confident. Uh, number six is a great one, E-P-O-M-J, uh, easiest part of my job. That comes up a lot, I think, when uh, we have a customer where we're doing a, a rental agreement or, rent con or, or, or a leasing contract, and the customer sees rent charge, they have no idea what that, that is. Mr. Customer, uh, you know, no, no problem. Be happy to, that, that, to handle that, that explanation for you. I'm very confident that after I explain this to you, you'll see exactly how the rent charge is calculated on your, on your consumer, lease, consumer lease agreement. Both supplying you with that kind of information, quite frankly, is the easiest part of my job as the financial services manager here at Harkins Honda. Uh, seven, eight, and nine, number seven, W-E-Y-T, my favorite, wouldn't expect you to. Wouldn't expect you to say yes to any part of our unique financial package, lest you really saw the need or value of it for you and your family. Wouldn't expect you to. W-Y-D-M-A-S-F, would you do me a small favor? Would you do me a small favor? And as you know, probably I'm a pretty rapid talker. Customer might say the same thing as well. If I'm talking too, pat, too fast, PTMTSD, please tell me to slow down. Please tell me to slow down so that you really understand the information that I'm trying, trying to share with you. So back to those, uh, those valid objections. Cost too much, payments too high, bought before, never used it, bought before, tried to use it, the claim was denied, and, 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 and just because, now we come back with uh, X number of these transitional power phrases. If I put three of these together, it's very easy to say, hey folks, no problem, no worries, I can appreciate that. Folks, let me ask here, let me just share this with you. I wouldn't expect you to say yes to any part of our unique financial package unless you really saw the need or value of it for you and your family. Now, here's the clarifying question, Mr. Custer, let me ask you, what is it? What is it that concerns you about our unique financial package here at Harkins Honda? And the top three answers, the product itself. Number two, there's no value in the product yet. And number three, almost always the number one response is the cost. It's a cost issue. It costs too much. Although if it was free, I would probably probably take it. So have some fun with those. The boxes, we call them, transitional power phrases, part of that conversational selling or discussion with your customer. My, next slide. All right, presenting our options. You know, F&I is not about menus. We've talked about that before. F&I is about helping customers make an informed decision about the options that are available to them in connection with their purchase. So how do we do that? IBS and IBQ. Commit yourself to that. Impact benefit statements. We tell them what the product is. We tell them what it does. We tell them what that means. Uh, that leads to conversational selling. Impact benefit questions. The key is ask the power questions and utilize the power words. Power words, again, are the words one and describe. A couple of examples. What is the one technology feature that excites you the most in your new vehicle? How would you describe a typical, typical month with your vehicle? What one word would best describe how you felt when? Well, that's a great question to now verbalize a story or a situation as it relates to one of your, your, your optional voluntary protection products. But one word would best describe how the, the last time how you felt when you came out of a Walmart or the grocery store or whatever, and as you got close to your new vehicle, you saw that uh, shopping cart, cart lodged right against uh, the door. And, and there, as you got close to it, you pulled it away, and there it was. The dent, the ding, the scrape, the scratch, et cetera, et cetera. What one word would best describe how you felt when verbalize the story or situation. So when you think about that, I'm gonna talk about uh, the, the, the impact benefit statement, what this does and what it means. A couple of quick examples. The service agreement, uh, what that does for you is it gives you a hedge against inflation on the cost of computers, components, parts, and labor as it provides you with extended coverage for major minor repairs and replacements at a reasonable cost. That's what it does. Folks, what that means to you is very simply, you won't, you, won't, you won't have to budget your cash for costly repair bills later. What can be better than that? How about GAP, our guaranteed asset protection, our GAP addendum contracts? GAP protects your budget, your credit, your savings, and your total investment against, against financial loss. That's what it does. What that means is if your car gets stolen and not recovered or totaled in an accident, you may not have to pay the difference between what your insurance check is and what you owe the bank. Again, what can be better than that? We offer and provide this coverage, this protection, as part of our unique financial package here at Honda, Harkins Honda, quite frankly, because we care. We really do. Folks, we care not just about your business today, that's very important, but we care about gaining your respect 
earning your repeat and referral business for the future as well. Now, when we talk about conversational selling, uh, in class we talk about, it really takes dialogue to the next level. It's an informal exchange of ideas. And the key to this mess, if you can master conversational selling, is what you want the customer to do is, is to ask you a question, and now you have the ability and the opportunity to respond to the customer, respond to customer requests for information. So ladies and gentlemen, if we can pull that off, if you can do that positively, and you're perceived and seen as responding to their requests for information, in many ways, that's going to eliminate the time problem or, or time issue with your presentation uh, of, your, of your products and services. So develop impact benefit statements, develop impact benefit questions. And remember, words, words are powerful, and the power words we talked about are the words one and, uh, and, 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 and describe. Uh, Mike, next slide, if you would. Okay. Uh, Menu introductions and presenting options. Menu introductions and presenting options. My good friend, Gil Vanover, we've talked about Gil before. Many of you know Gil Vanover. Gil is uh, Executive Vice President of, of ACE. ACE is Automotive Compliance Education, uh, great certification program. Gil, Gil is also the, uh, the, uh, the, the primary uh, uh, owner of GBO3 and Associates. GBO3 and Associates is a consulting and auditing firm. But to me, more than that, Gil is also the author of uh, the book that he uh, came out with in March of 2018. And Gil's book is called Automotive Compliance in a Digital World. I would encourage you to get that. Automotive Compliance in a Digital World. I like it because it's short. It's only 18 chapters. I like it because the print is big. And I also like it because it's practical application especially chapters 9, 10, and 11, when the titles of those three chapters are e-desking, e-menu, and e-contracting. I would encourage you to get that. E-desking, e-menu, and e-contracting. So what is this information? Uh, the most important piece of paper or digital document on a deal file is a properly executed menu. Why, you ask? The answer is on the next line. It confirms that the dealership was transparent. This confirms the dealership was transparent during the sale of, of F&I products. So you want to be transparent, commit yourself to that. You don't want to be, uh, don't do it. Properly executed menu. Uh, it does or accomplishes four things, and it's all in automotive compliance in a digital world. It affirms the agreement in sales from, from the base payment uh, standpoint as the payment is initialed by the customer. So we're confirming and affirming the base, base uh, payment, the base vehicle only payment, as the payment initials uh, that payment on the, uh, on the menu. It discloses that the products offered and selected are optional, not a requirement, not a commitment to, to, to be financed. It discloses the base and final payment on the selected decline page. And finally, number four, discloses the prices of selected products and, 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 the, and that the terms agree with the retail installment sale contract or consumer lease agreement. So next slide, Mike, real quickly. We have a, 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 a two-column menu, one with our unique financial package, five products, and one that's a custom column. Uh, you know because of what we do when you come to class and I've been in your stores, I'm a believer in the one or two-column menu as opposed to the four or five, eliminating the platinum, gold, silver, bronze, rust, tinfoil uh, 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 columns, whatever, and just go with unique financial package and, and, and custom. So Mr. Customer, once again, once again, as we previously discussed, these are the terms and conditions under which you can take delivery of your vehicle today with your approved credit. Again, the base amount financed is up at the top of the menu is $28,000. Your base vehicle only payment is $450.94. That's for a term of 72 months, which is six years, and your annual percentage rate is 5%. Folks, with that in mind, there's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available to protect your credit uh, and, and, and your investment. Here's a menu breakdown of your optional voluntary protection products that are available, available to protect your, your, your protection, uh, your, your, your protect your credit and your, and, and your investment. So we go through that with the customer. Uh, the great news is folks, you can choose all these products. Quite frankly, you can choose none of them because nothing is required or is a condition of financing. Or folks like many of our clients here, here at Harkins Honda, you can mix and match these options and truly customize a plan that fits your driving habits right, and ownership experiences perfectly. Which of these options would work best for you and your family this afternoon and see what they say. Now, as we get into the products themselves, we're gonna recommend that you go to the actual product agreements. 
Uh, my next slide. Value added objection handling. Uh, folks, if you want this, uh, this, this slide, this information for training purposes, get back to us, we can get it to you. Here's eight great value added sales ideas uh, that will just help you add to that PSPRS, product sold per retail sale. What are they? 99.9% .9 trouble free days of ownership. Number two, 99% trouble free percent of covered components. Number three, a comp collision insurance versus vehicle service contract. Probably started teaching that in 1979. Number four, extended service agreement from a major retailer versus a dealership vehicle service contract. Number five, maybe the best one to go to because it's right between the, the eyes. It gets to the cost issue, the investment gamble. Number six, the question mark close. What happens to this payment of 450 when your vehicle's in need of repair? DSC, the why wait gamble. And last but certainly not least, uh, gas, gas savings and your new car, your new car payment. So very quickly, with that investment gamble, think about this. The customer's uh, base vehicle only payment is 450 uh, to add the uh, complete protection. Your optional voluntary protection products adds another $75. So 450 now becomes 525. The customer is not objecting really to the 525. They're objecting to the 75. So we remind them that the, uh, the 450 investment for their vehicle that they've already chosen, the payment of 450 provides them with six things. And those six things are the dominant buying motives of what? Safety, performance, appearance, comfort, economy, and dependability. Safety, performance, appearance, comfort, economy, and dependability. The 450 provides you with that. But well, folks, with that in mind, with that in mind, doesn't it make sense? And if you can to invest another just 250 a day, that's the 75 divided by 30, the best 250 a day, and it provides you with, with protection for five things. Those five things are number one, your family budget. Number two, your good credit, your credit track record. Number three, your increasing investment in your purchase. What is your increasing investment? Well, if they gave you any cash up front in the deal, that's an investment they've made already. If there's any positive equity in the transaction, transaction, that's an investment that they've made already. Quite frankly, if they have no cash or little cash and no positive equity, we already talked about negative equity, so they may not, not, may not have much of cash or equity, positive, but they're always gonna have number three. Folks, let me ask you, beginning in August or September, every month thereafter, as you make that payment to last national bank, what's really happening to your, to, to, to your investment in cash? They will always get that right, it's going up. Number four, we're protecting your, your personal savings. And uh, number five, we're protecting uh, the vehicle or, or the unit, the RV itself, depending upon, depending upon the purchase. So the $15 a day investment provides you with what? Safety, performance, appearance, comfort, economy, dependability, the 250 a day designed to protect what? Your family budget, your credit, your investment, your personal savings, and maybe even the vehicle itself. So we found, and I will just share with you, it's not on a slide, but take that with you and I can get this to you as well. A unique financial package trial close that you can take to the bank uh, for PSPRS purposes, uh, product sold for retail sale is, is very simply nothing more than this. So folks, bottom line, can you see? Can you see how, how our unique financial package not only, not only provides you with a known manageable investment, just 250 a day, but also, folks, eliminates your unknown and unexpected payment escalation risk and your need to self-insure and accept liability yourself. Again, we offer, we provide this because we care, not just about your business today, but we care about gaining your respect, earning your repeat and referral business for the future as well. So once again, can you see how our unique financial package not only provides you with a known manageable, manageable investment, just 250 a day, but also, here's the key, eliminates your what? Your unknown and unexpected payment escalation risk and your need to self-insure and accept liability yourself. Bottom line, KMI, known manageable investment versus PER, payment escalation risk. We care, you'll win it every time. Take it to the bank for PS, PRS, success, purposes. Then finally, Mike, my, my last slide before I yield back to you, Successful Media Selling uh, 2.0. A recommendation to you as an agent, partner, dealer, client, whatever, is develop uh, a mission statement, a mission statement. One that we develop or give to our uh, agent partners and dealer clients to, to change, use as is, or, or develop their own whatever. The key is to have a mission statement. The one that we think is very, is, is very good, in fact, it's excellent, is very simply this. Uh, every customer, every customer knows what they're getting. They agree to buy it. 
you know, why they need it and they feel good about it when they leave the dealership. Think about that, folks, if you can accomplish that. Every customer knows what they're getting, they agree to buy it, they know why they need it, and they really feel good about it when they leave, when they leave our dealership. So, recommendation is to use that, make that better, add to it, delete from it, and have mission statements for your, for your stores. Now, internally, our American Guardian group of companies, specifically our American Guardian, Guard, Guardian Warranty Services University, training value statements that we present to our agent partners and dealer clients, and I teach in all of our classes, both in-store and when people come to our, our workshops in Chicago, we're talking about compliance and ethics, but more than that, how we present our products and services. Our training value statement is very simply this. We endorse and teach. We endorse and teach the industry standard and best practices that are recommended by NADA, AFIP, that's AFIP, the Association of Finance and Insurance Professionals, and the American Guardian Warranty Services Seller Code of Conduct for retail sales, for retail sales, which serves as a guide to the proper sales practices for all retail sellers of AGWS products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, as we started this, our commitment to you, uh, our agent partners, our dealer clients, and others of you that, that are with us, as always, is to help you maximize deal profit, meaning both front-end gross and finance and insurance income, but as always, to do it in a manner that's consistent with good customer relations and sound business practices. So with that, I want to yield back to uh, Mike Day to wrap this up for us and talk with you about the fact that all of these webinars that we've completed, and this is, uh, what, 11 of them, seven this year and four last year, are available online at... Uh, uh, agwsu.com uh, forward slash webinars. You can pull up any and all of these webinars individually and do your own training session with respect to that. Thank you for joining us. And now back to Mr. Day. Michael, you're on, sir. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Bob, for the great information. Uh, that wraps up today's AGWSU webinar. Uh, make sure to check out these uh, next webinar dates uh, so you don't miss any. And please give AGWS uh, a follow on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you again, Bob, and thank you everyone for attending. Have a great rest of your day.